Here's a new word for you, homeostasis. It's a compound word invented in the early 20th century, which comes from the Greek for homeo, meaning similar to, and stasis, meaning stable. It describes the ability of an organism, like you, to maintain stable internal conditions, despite the fact that the environment around you is constantly changing. We say that your body is a homeostatic system, and that means that things like your body temperature, the levels of water in your body, um, the concentration of sugar in your blood, and many other things are regulated by the nervous and endocrine systems to keep them as stable as possible. In this video, we're going to look at a specific aspect of homeostasis, blood sugar levels, and we'll explore the negative feedback loop in the endocrine system that keeps those levels steady. What is blood sugar? Well, you eat a lot of different foods, but through a complicated series of chemical reactions in your digestive system, many of them are converted into glucose, which is a kind of sugar. Glucose molecules are used by your body cells as an energy source through the chemical reaction we call respiration. So it's important that there is always glucose in your bloodstream so that the cells have a steady source of energy. However, it's also important that glucose levels don't get too high because that can cause a whole range of problems. So your blood sugar levels are carefully regulated by a negative feedback loop. To make sure my explanation of this is clear, I'm first going to go over a little bit of vocabulary. We've just talked about glucose, that's a type of sugar molecule. Imagine each of these green ovals here is a glucose molecule. Glucose molecules can also be linked together into a long chain-like molecule called glycogen. When the body needs energy, it uses glucose to do respiration. But when it needs to store excess glucose away for later use, it converts it into glycogen and stores it in cells. Next, recall that the pancreas is one of the glands of the endocrine system. It produces two hormones that are vital for this feedback loop. They're called insulin and glucagon. Make sure not to mix up glucagon, which is a hormone, a signaling molecule, with glycogen, which is the stored form of glucose. The target cells for these two hormones, insulin and glucagon, are liver cells. Remember that the liver is an organ that's part of your digestive system. Its cells are really good at doing the chemical reactions that convert glucose into glycogen and then convert stored glycogen back into glucose. Now, notice that I've color coded the vocab here. The blue words are chemical compounds, so they exist as individual molecules in the body. The red words are entire organs. Okay, now we're ready to look at the negative feedback loop that keeps your blood glucose levels in homeostasis. All right, so it starts with the fact that your pancreas is constantly monitoring your blood glucose levels, constantly measuring them. After you've eaten a meal and your digestive system gets to work, the concentration of glucose in your blood goes up. When the pancreas detects that the glucose levels are getting a little bit high, it releases the hormone insulin into the blood. This hormone travels to the liver and its effect is to stimulate the liver cells to remove glucose from the blood and convert it into glycogen and store it. Over a short while, this reduces the amount of glucose in the blood. As time goes on, your body cells use up glucose, particularly if you're exercising, and the pancreas will detect that the glucose levels have dropped a bit low. When this happens, it releases the other hormone, glucagon, into the blood. It may help you to remember that glucagon is the hormone that's released when the glucose is gone. Glucagon travels to the liver cells and it stimulates them to break down the stored glycogen and release it into the blood. This restores your blood glucose levels. This feedback loop is constantly operating in your body, keeping your blood glucose levels within a healthy range.